Hello there. There's been another modification board for the Quangsheng series of transceivers. This one is a bit different because it's got a Bluetooth. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at uh, how it compares with the previous modifications, how to install it, how to pair it, and then we'll give it a bit of a test. Now I paid about 20 Singapore dollars for it, which is about uh, I guess in about 15 US dollars or maybe about 12 pounds something like that <laughs> which is funny because I think that's about the same price as I paid for the radio but there you go but as you can see from this website it's uh, selling for $13.60 so you might be able to get a bit cheaper now before we jump in I want to give a big thank you to our sponsor PCBWay now, if you're into electronics like me, you know how important it is to have a good partner for PCB manufacturing. Now, PCBWay isn't just about PCB manufacturing. They also offer a full range of services from PCB prototyping and assembly to advanced options like flex PCBs, CNC machining, and even 3D printing. So whether you're looking for a small DIY project or a complex design, their high quality standards, fast turnaround times, and budget friendly prices make them the perfect choice. They also have a community for projects where PCBWay actively supports makers and hobbyists worldwide by showcasing their incredible designs and helping them to bring them to life. So if you're ready to take your projects to the next level, head over to PCBWay.com and see how they can make your ideas reality. Check the description for the links. Right, so first of all, I'm going to do a comparison with some of the, the previous boards. So here's, I think, the first generation of the board. Now, <laughs> you might notice that some bits are missing. Uh, I'm guilty of stealing the uh, 4732 IC and the crystal for another project. But never mind. So there's the capacitors for the crystal, a few support components, antenna connection, connections to the original um, FM radio receiver IC. Um, which brings, of course, power and a few and audio connections. Um, there's the AM antenna uh, reset line and ground, and and that's pretty much it. You notice there's nothing else, and there's no protection for the antenna inputs. Nothing is just a bare bones, minimal kind of implementation. I mean, it'll work. It'll probably perform. Um, pretty well but the the thing that I'd worry about is whether you could damage the RF input if you transmit it on the device because I say there's no protection what you get with it where well, you get um, RF choke and some capacitors uh, these are necessary if you link it to the existing antenna which of course you don't have a choice on this one now this one is version 2.5 now this is just the dogs nads I love this one it's got all the bells and whistles so there's the uh, 4732 in the middle, the crystal oscillator, 32 kilohertz. Um, it's got a, let's have a look straight up. It's got an audio amplifier. Um, it's got a reset connection there. Um, what else have we got? What else have we got? We got um, obviously uh, antenna input jack and RF input amplifier for AM, which is fantastic. Uh, it's got protection for the FM am, uh, antenna, just there you can see. Uh, it's also got protection for the AM antenna, just there. So well protected on both antenna inputs. Um, and then of course it's got connection to an external independent antenna, which is good. And let's see what you get with it. You get, you get a nice accessory kit as well. Uh, where is it? over here somewhere here we go um, so you got all the link wires to make the jumpers you got the RF, RF choke um, you got obviously the antenna cable with the RF jack on it and uh, capacitors uh, nicely packaged fault though the only thing is it doesn't have any instructions well none of them do I don't know why none of them have instructions so there we are now here's the new one with uh, Bluetooth. Now it comes in, you can't kind of break it out of like the, the flexible PCB. It just cuts in little taps and it comes out. Now let's have a look at what it's got. 
So you've got the connections there to the position of the existing FM chip. There's the 4732. Uh, there's an antenna connection for an external antenna. And it's also got the option of using the internal antenna as well. It's got the reset line input, which goes to pin 9 on the 4732, 32 kHz oscillator up there. And there's a Bluetooth chip. I had a look at the, the number. I can't find it. I can't find any data sheets on it. Um, the, I do know it's stereo. Can you see you've got uh, R3 and R4, C6, C7, so there's a left and right audio inputs. So that means it transmits on stereo. You've got antenna for Bluetooth just there. And then you've got a mute connection, which I guess goes to the audio amplifier and gets muted at the same time as the amplifier does. So basically, whenever the processor wants to mute the audio on the amplifier, it also mutes the Bluetooth. But that's just my guess. And then you get this thin bit of coax to link the external antenna connection with the SMA connector on the top of the radio, which of course you get with the kit. And you also get the surface mount um, components, which look like RF chokes. I don't think they're capacitors. It looks like they've got a coil. And I imagine you would use those if you are going to use the internal antenna jack. Because if you remember, the, the early versions of these mods used RF chokes if you use the internal antenna. So that's this uh, Bluetooth chip is a BP26666. Can't find anything on the internet. Okay, now what I'd like to sh do is show you a comparison with a side by side comparison with the version 2.5 of the mod. A few things which are a bit mm, not so good. Right, so here's the version 2.5 which is just brilliant now first of all you see that the 2.5 has got a protection on the RF inputs this one doesn't appear to have any it's got an RF amplifier which the Bluetooth one doesn't and although it's got the Bluetooth chip um, which could potentially provide some amplification I guess it doesn't have a separate uh, audio amplifier which probably means it will be quiet on upper sideband and lower sideband just like the early generations of the board without an amplifier did. Now I'm going to show you how I installed it but I'm not going to go through all the details A to Z because there's just so many uh, examples already on YouTube but what I will do, I'll point you to one which I really recommend um, and it's a video by Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango um, a chap called Paul who did a fantastic uh, video on how to install version 2.5 of the mod which is my favorite mod um, so if you look at that video um, as I've shown here uh, you'll learn everything that there is uh, that you need to know to install one of these and I'm just going to cover the bits which are different from installing version 2.5 so here I am as I've half installed it uh, so I've made the connections to where the existing FM receiver chip was um, I've also connected a Bluetooth antenna and they might ask how on earth do I know how long to cut that well <laughs> I have to admit I just kind of copied it from the photograph in the advert on Aliexpress um, <laughs> and then there's a link between mute and that resistor which is closest to that link which is next to the amplifier chip I think that's the mute input from the microprocessor the ground connection of course and the reset connection to the adjacent resistor um, okay that's that's pretty much it so far and I'm gonna put the uh, the screen back right I made all the connections um, as you can see I've uh, connected the antenna wire for the external antenna just there uh, so I put the display back so I'm ready to test it a big moment 
checking on my connections. Oh, yeah, well, that's good. All right, here we go. Oh, well, I haven't broken it. That's something. And you can see LED 5 on the mod board, the Bluetooth light flashing. I guess that means I don't have a connection. A Bluetooth connection, that is. Now I want to test my antenna. Okay, that's good so far. See, I put in a lower frequency. No, I didn't want to do that actually. I thought I'd Right, I'll have to put it again. I wanted to put in the time signal at 10 megahertz. Okay, now I'm going to connect my homemade Magloop antenna. She sat on the table next to me. Yay, I can hear it. Can you hear that? Success. Oh, I'm happy with that. Well, I guess the next thing to do is to try and connect some uh, Bluetooth speaker or something. What I'd really like to use this is with my uh, favorite noise cancelling Sony headphones, or earbuds, I should say. I think I'll try and connect those. I just got to put them into pairing mode. So open the lid and press the button on the back. Okay, it's in pairing mode. Now I've had a Bluetooth device like this before and I had to switch it off and on. So let's try that. And there you can see the Bluetooth light is now steady. That's a good sign. Let's see if it's paired with my earbuds. Yes, it works. You'll have to take my word for it at the moment, but it works. Oh, brilliant. Now, I paired it with this Hong Kong Da A320 radio in Bluetooth mode. Um, and to pair it, it was similar to the way I did it with the, um, the earbuds. So, I switched on the crank chain. Um, and then I put the Bluetooth speaker in pairing mode then I switched off the Kuangshang and then turned it back on again and it just instantly paired and here you can hear the time signal again brilliant and it is, I'll tell you what this is great because the Kuangshang you know has got terrible audio and so it's really nice to be able to put it through some quality headphones uh, or a quality Bluetooth speaker and get some decent uh, audio reproduction. Oh, that's great. Very happy with that. But here it is when I'm trying to tune it. So you can see what it sounds like.
So I did try it on upper sideband and lower sideband as well and it is quiet. Um, so pretty much as we expected because it doesn't have a audio preamplifier. Um, the other thing that I would say about this is that the, although the Bluetooth works brilliant and um, I did try it with um, FM as well um, and confirmed it's in stereo and it sounds good. Um, it's a shame that it doesn't have protection on the antenna input so I would be worried that if you transmit at the same time as you've got a the external antenna plugged in then it's possible you could overload or even burn out the the 4732 DSP chip so that's a shame and I'm sure it's not as sensitive on um, on shortwave or HF as the version 2.5 is because it doesn't have an RF amplifier but you know if, if Bluetooth is important to you then um, then yeah it, it definitely works it does the job and the distance I uh, got about 20 feet on it when I was just a shame you can't seem to have everything <laughs> I was thinking of doctoring the the two boards the modification boards and doing a kind of a Frankenstein electro banana special and um, attaching the Bluetooth to the version 2.5 sure wouldn't be that difficult to do um, and then put that into my, my latest Crankshank I keep buying them, i got to stop buying them but I keep buying them um, right well thanks for watching I hope it was interesting to you and um, if you found it useful please give me a like and subscribe it means a lot to me and until next time, take care, look after yourselves, and bye for now.